Morning, guys. Welcome to Copy Chat. Mm. Wow, I absolutely love it. Totally delicious. I'll tell you what. A lot of folks will ask, hey, how do you make your coffee? And just to kind of, for those of you who haven't heard, what we do is we use heavy cream in there. And I got away from that coffee meat because of you guys. A lot of viewers came out and told me, David, that stuff is literally lethal. So then I started to investigate a little bit and found out, holy mackerel, I mean, talk about liquid cancer, basically. So what we did is we switched over to heavy cream in the coffee. And then what we do is we use natural hazelnut syrup that's made. And then, of course, we sprinkle in, you know, cinnamon shavings. And those cinnamon shavings, I'll tell you what, they add an absolutely amazing kick. I'll tell you, wow. Mm. Now, some folks think <laughs> I got a little bit of extra stuff in my coffee there because, you know, I'm just too happy. <laughs> but hey, you know what? It's because I've learned to kind of look at things down the road and not to put too much stock in the right now. Because, hey, guys, the fact of the matter is what happens is this. What we go through moment by moment changes, doesn't it? And so you could be going through a real tough time right now. And hey, this too shall pass. And I have to develop that kind of attitude in my spirit and stuff like that. And plus, of course, my hope is not in my circumstances, obviously. My hope is in a God who can change the circumstances. That's a big, big deal in my life. And I'll tell you what, it has made a major, major difference on my outlook, to be sure. Now, guys, the article that I was reading today, wow. <laughs> mm. Does this ever tell a story? So as we all know, we have been looking at, you know, we've seen some articles there where the savings of a lot of Americans, like what they said, 40% of Americans don't even have like a thousand dollars put away for a rainy day should something happen. And, and then I, I think it was like 12% of working Americans have absolutely zero savings and things like that. And then, of course, we saw, hey, with the consumer spending going way, way down, but credit card debt going way, way up, that what we're really seeing is we're not seeing people going out there and buying TVs and this and that and all these other stuff. No, they're using their credit cards to pay the utility bills and to buy groceries and do this and this and that. And, of course, those credit card limits are going up and up and they're having to serve service, sorry, you know, that monthly payment for the revolving line of credit, which guys, by the way, they keep it really, really slow because with credit cards, remember at 20 some percent interest, it's the never ever plan. If you actually just paid the minimum payment to pay off, you know, the debt, it's literally like 10 times what you actually use for debt. It's a, it's a ridiculous, you know, figure. Well, guys, the article that is coming out now is that a lot of Americans have stopped paying down their debt and their credit scores are plunging. And so what do you say in there? Well, guys, it's people that are missing payments. You know, maybe they don't make it in that 30 day window. They have to make it in a 60 day window or a 90 day window. And of course that starts to affect, you know, their credit scores because the ratings come out. You're not an R1 rating anymore. You're like an R2, an R3 or something like that because you're delinquent on those payments. And the deal is this, a lot of people are stopping paying down their debt. Well, guys, what does that tell you? That tells you that a lot of folks are starting to hit the higher ceilings of their credit card limits and they don't have the cash anymore. And so literally what they put on it, they're ending up having to use more than what they put on it. They've hit their limit and they can't service the debt anymore. Guys, this is a major tell about what's coming down the road for a lot of people in this economy. I'll kid you not. Now, when I worked up there in Canada for a good while there, I actually worked in, you know, the insolvency division at one time in the tax department. And, you know, would train people on bankruptcy legislation and all that kind of stuff. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you something. Consumer debt, it is insane. The level of bankruptcies that are actually going on right now, it is absolutely off the charts. These trustees that are actually going out there, they literally are advertising for people to either go on orderly payment of debt, make consumer proposals, or file for bankruptcy. And a lot of people, to a lot of people, it feels like great relief to get, oh, out from under that. Then what happens? Well, you know what happens almost autonomically? Believe it or not, folks get go into bankruptcy. Let's say it's a first time bankruptcy. Then they get discharged. Well, do you know what happens practically at the time of discharge? Within about a week, they start getting solicitations for credit cards again. 
and they get right back into the same fix that they were before. I've seen it, I've seen it time and time again. And then they end up in a second insolvency event and we're watching bankruptcy rates just go through the roof. And when we see all these delinquencies and people's credit scores getting absolutely decimated, guys, it's telling a big tale, isn't it? It's telling you that folks have reached the limit. A lot of people that cannot afford to live now they've used all their lines of credit, they've used their credit cards, and now they're at a place where they have multiple credit cards at the max limit and they cannot survive anymore. And literally, they're stopping paying those credit cards so that they can use their cash to actually go and live. And the thing is this, the cash is getting dwindling down too, because why? <laughs> because of this entire money printing machine. That's why. And inflate, inflate, inflate. And what are they doing when they do that? Well, they're reaching right into our jeans and they're pulling out the cash by the fistfuls, aren't they? Because the loss of our purchasing power. Now, guys, when you see that happening, I'm going to tell you something. One of the things that is a result of being invested into this space is you've got an asset there that is your counterbalance to the rising rate of inflation. Because look, the deal is this, these equities, you know, and crypto and even commodities and things like that, they actually, you know, start costing more and more and more as the dollar goes down, 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 and the and the inflation goes up, 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 don't they? So in a way, it's kind of a hedge against inflation in that capacity. But a lot of times when we see the DXY literally tumble and you see all these indicators that things aren't going so good and the dollar just starts to collapse, 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 we see an inverse correlation there and we watch these equities and crypto markets and things that hold value just go in price and they outdo the the you know the rate of inflation they start appreciating faster than inflation does and then you see some major major gains in that capacity and every single bull run you fact check this for yourself and this digital asset space has actually a reverse correlation to the dollar and the DXY. When the dollar is tumbled, this, this space literally takes off like a rocket ship. That's what's happening. Well, guys, I'll tell you, it's important to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going out there on in the greater marketplace. And when you see little articles like this, and guys, this one was one on the three and four pages deep and really, really tucked away. It's not one that you're gonna hear on the mainstream media that much until it's an absolute cataclysmic crisis. Why? Because they really wanna prop up this narrative that all's well in the world, things are getting better, inflation's going down, yeah. But what numbers are you using to calculate that kind of inflation? Well, you're leaving out rent, you're leaving out utilities, how those are skyrocketing, you're leaving out the cost of groceries and food, you're leaving out practically everything that the average guy has to face on a day-to-day -day basis in those inflation numbers to say that they're coming down. Absolute hogwash. And unemployment rates, guys, are going up. The only difference is this. You're not seeing a lot of applications for unemployment insurance. Why? Because folks aren't qualifying for it. That's why. And you're not seeing people getting on, you know, unemployment insurance benefits because they haven't been at the job for long enough or they've had two or three part-time jobs that, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't allow them to qualify. That doesn't mean that you're seeing a, you know, a, a big drop in the, in the unemployment stats. It just means that, hey, you're not seeing all of the underlying things where people that can't apply anymore and aren't getting benefits anymore and they don't even have the unemployment benefits. Hey, unemployment is still out there in a big way. And this is what's going down. And yet they want to paint this picture of all oh, how rosy things are and it's getting better and on and on and on. Why, guys? We're in a major election cycle. That's why. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Every time that we've seen a big election cycle, you watch and see, you can correlate even that to the markets and see how the markets react in big time election cycles. We've seen it every single time. It's not, this time is not going to be any different. And guys, you're, those of us that have the ability, we have to really, really, really thank God for the ability that we have any expendable cash to go out there and invest in these markets because the reality is this, we're in a debt-driven economy. And the point of a debt-driven economy is this, they want you to spend every cent you earn and then some. I mean, you think about it, how many solicitations for credit cards show up in your mailbox every week? Well, I know in mine, it's like literally over 10 on average. And the other deal is this, you know, and I share this when I do coaching, but the fact is, think about it in this capacity. Let's say, you know, you know you're going out there and you've saved five or $10,000, car breaks down. Well, 
most folks don't want to take that five or ten grand, do they? And go buy another used car and being up in the same boat they are, right? So what do they do? They go down their dealership, you know, they you know, they get a car there, they they mortgage themselves for two or three years on the car payments, right? Okay. Well, the fridge starts going on the fridge. Well, they go down to Home Depot, take a look at a new fridge. You know, the guy there says, hey, don't worry about it. You don't have to start paying for 18 months, a year and a half before one payment is required. And people don't think of a long-term consequence of the interest when those payments start rolling in. And that's what it is. And then you'll see places that'll advertise, hey, no credit refused, doesn't matter how bad your credit is. Guys, they wanna keep us in debt Keep us in debt, keep us in debt, because why? Because when you're in debt, guys, hey, you know, the borrower is servant to the lender. You're losing freedom, but it just doesn't feel like that. And they're creating an environment where a lot of people are in a world of hurt. I mean, 40% of Americans don't even have $1,000 in the bank should something rainy day come along. That is absolutely obscene. You know, in, in what they, you know, call the world's greatest economy. That is absolutely a travesty. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of people are hurting. And if you're not in that boat, you just get down your, thank the Lord for that. You know, go out and just literally just bless God. For the fact of the matter is, you know, the blessing of the Lord makes a man rich and adds no sorrow to it. That's what I believe. <laughs> and hey, Get this, God's no respecter of persons either. Do you think that, oh, well, I like this guy, but I don't like this guy? That's not it at all. It's that people are buying into this whole debt-driven economy and getting more and more in debt and more and more enslaved by it when the reality is, is, hey, if you can do it, stop, get out of debt, put the brakes on it. Okay, you know, go out there and do what you need to do to resolve that situation for yourself if it's at all possible because I'll tell you, you get out of debt, I, you are one of the few that are walking around there with no liability. That is a major, major deal. Do not discount it. It is a big deal. It may not feel like it. Hey, I remember Judy and I under that weight of debt, and that was one of our primary goals, of course, in investing is, hey, we want to get out from underneath this debt and this debt system. That's got to be your focus too. That should be one of your primary goals is, you know, getting out of debt. And I'm not just talking credit card debt, but cars, mortgages, the whole kit and caboodle. You get out of that, I'll tell you what, that is a major life-changing event. Don't kid yourself. Don't let anybody minimize that. And guys, I'll tell you what, be encouraged. If you're invested in this space, hey, if you're one of the folks that are watching this video, that means that your attention is on this space. You're a minority. Don't think you're not. Very few people are even aware of the opportunity or the you know the financial change that is coming in a powerful way. And these articles and these stats that are coming out that are saying this stuff are telling a tale. And I'm telling you what, guys, we are on the right side of history. Don't kid yourself. Well, guys, I'll tell you, I hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. I know not all the news is great, but there is some silver linings in these dark clouds, and that is this. You and I already know the answer to this to this problem. We've got the solution and we're already a part of it and that is a great big deal. Well, I'll tell you what, until later on when we have another fantastic video for you, I sure hope you have a great one and take care.